Give it up for Dan. So you're the one, you're the star tonight. <clears throat> I'll never forget the first time that I saw her. I walked into class. There she was. She had messy brown, long hair. She had a short skirt on, knee-high socks. She was beautiful. Uh, as my luck would have it, she sat next to me in class. And so we had to go around and introduce ourselves. When it got to her, that's when I learned that her name was Bridget, that she had a slight British accent from having lived there for a few years, and that she had a little bit of a lisp. <laughs> so about a half an hour later, when we were over at the water table playing, the water running over her hands, a little bit splashes on her smock, and I know that it's love. <laughs> We're in first grade. <laughs> so what I don't know at that point is that this will turn out to be the longest running relationship of my life. <laughs> Bridget and I were together in second grade, in third grade, <laughs> fourth grade, <laughs> and fifth grade. Five years. <laughs> We'd wave to each other on the bus, smile across the room. We'd never talk. <laughs> but it was love. So things went really well for four years. <laughs> then in fifth grade, things started to change. <laughs> fifth grade is a time of transitions. For me, it was, it was a lot of transitions. I had a group of friends, and they informed me pretty early on that when we moved to sixth grade, certain things just weren't going to fly. <laughs> One thing was that we weren't going to be able to peg or tight roll our jeans anymore. <laughs> it just wasn't a style that you could pull off in sixth grade. So for anyone who doesn't know what that means, I've done it to one of my legs here. <laughs> this one. It was, it was a big thing back then. So this was happening. At the same time, our friends, Bridget and I's mutual friends, were starting to notice that we were together. <laughs> so they started getting involved. There was a time on the steps when Bridget's friends and my friends were there, and they were trying to get Bridget to compliment me. And my friends were trying to get me to compliment Bridget. So my friends were like, tell Bridget, you know, that she's a babe. And I was like, Bridget, you're a babe. <laughs> and then Bridget said, you too, you're a babe. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's for girls, right? But uh, it's all right. And that day I was wearing a, a bum equipment sweatshirt, <laughs> which I guess you guys know what that is. I don't have one to demonstrate that. But so they were like, Tell Dan that, you know, some, he's got a cool sweatshirt. Tell him about it. She's a, she goes, uh, I like your green bum. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. <laughs> but one of the biggest things was uh, on the playground, people really took an interest in our relationship, and they really wanted us to take it to the next level. And that meant kissing. So it was late fall, early winter, so it's kind of cold out, and we're bundled up in our starter jackets, and <laughs> Bridget and I are kind of close, hanging out. At this point, we're talking a bit more uh, than we had the past four years. <laughs> and my friends get behind me, and her friends get behind her, and they're kind of pushing us together, and just pushing our heads together, <laughs> together, together. And I'm kind of nervous, and I'm laughing a little bit, and I, and I snort, and just, and just boogers just come out of my nose and down my lips. And so oddly enough, she backs away. And, and I back away, and it's just not going to happen today. So it doesn't happen. It's fine. You know, go to school, go home, everything's fine. A couple days later, um, the friends line up the same thing again, and they push. 
and I don't blow snot, <laughs> and we connect. And it's my first kiss. Her lips are warm, pretty chapped. <laughs> Tastes like Cheetos. And it's amazing. It's so amazing. I'm on cloud nine. Uh, and I go home that night, and I'm really happy, and we have dinner, sitting at the table eating, and they ask me about my day, and I just say, it's good. I'm not going to say anything about the kiss. <laughs> After dinner, my mom pulls me to the side in the living room, and, and she says, I just want to talk to you. She's like, you know, I know, I know that you and Bridget are, are really good friends, which, man, I know that you've been seeing each other for five years. <laughs> um, but I just want you to know, like, you know, I'd be really upset if, you know, if you guys were holding hands and, you know, if you were kissing, I'm, I don't even know. I don't even know what I would say. And my stomach just sinks. How does she know? But she knows. How does she know that this happened today? She says, yeah, like, that would be really, really serious. And this is fifth grade, so I'm still afraid of my mom. <laughs> so later on that evening, I get on the phone. I, I know Bridget's number by heart. By heart, never called her before. <laughs> so I pick up the phone and I dial, and her brother picks up the phone. And this is her brother who, seven years later, in a car of his friends, will drive by and destroy me and my friends with super soakers. <laughs> Pat. And I say, Pat, can I talk to Bridget? He's like, fine, whatever. Puts Bridget on the phone, and I tell Bridget, Bridget, I'm really sorry. We can't kiss anymore. And she says, okay. That, yeah, okay, that's fine. She hangs up. A week later, she breaks up with me. And I'm devastated. And I cry. She gets back together with me. A week later, she breaks up with me again. And I learned two really important things from this. One is that if you want to keep the girl, you have to put out. <laughs> you have to put out. No ifs, ands, or buts. And the second thing is that when it comes to doing stuff with girls now, I never listen to my mom anymore. <laughs> Thank you.